We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust. And to be trusted. We all despise control. And desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Okay, good morning, Africa. Good afternoon. Good, afternoon. good evening uh, from wherever place uh, you are connecting from. My name is Wisdom Donko. Um, I'm from Ghana, and then I work with Africa Open Data and Internet Research Foundation. Yes, and I requested for this session uh, for us to discuss about IGF in Africa. So um, you're all welcome. Um, in this meeting, we have an, a number of uh, dignitaries uh, from our continent. And then we also have the host country, uh, the state minister uh, from the host country for next year's uh, Internet Governance uh, Forum. Uh, she will also be um, speaking uh, to us and for us to know their preparedness uh, and all that. And also, uh, we'll be hearing from uh, we'll be hearing from rep from the ECA and also we have a uh, Mokta for from Unica he will also be addressing us and then uh, so after we've listened to his address and then uh, we go into discussion. So um, discussion about uh, Africa Internet Governance Forum, and then uh, what we can all do to support uh, the host country. So at this time, I will welcome uh, Mr. Jim Paul to give us the welcome address and then the opening remark. Thank you very much, um, um, Mr. Moderator, and Your Excellency, Honorable Ministers, and dear friends and partners, thank you very much for joining us in this meeting in particular to allow us to prepare effectively for the next round of the Internet Governance Forum, which will be held in Africa, as well as the Africa uh, Internet Governance Forum uh, which will be held from the 14th to the 16th of December. So in just over a week's time, and which allows us to highlight some of the key themes which we would like to ensure are represented in uh, these uh, events. I think obviously in the context of Africa, internet governance is very much around the agency of African citizens so that the internet can truly serve the purposes of sustainable development for the citizens of our continent. Uh, too often, we are dealing with the issues of internet governance by reacting to what is happening around the world or reacting to situations that are defined elsewhere. At the same time, there is an emerging, uh, there is an emerging momentum around the use of the internet and all of its provisions in sustainable development in Africa. We have seen that in the context of the response to the COVID-19 pandemic, where a new generation of entrepreneurs is making use, for example, of the opportunities of e-commerce uh, to be able to trade freely and effectively, leveraging the emerging opportunity of the African continental free trade area. We have seen through initiatives such as the African Medical Supply uh, Platform, which was created in the context of COVID-19, where we have been, where entrepreneurs have been using the uh, provisions of the internet and the opportunities of such platforms to showcase their innovations in terms of medical, uh, medical equipment and facilities, and putting them, uh, putting them online in a way which made them much more accessible for procurement teams from within the continent and even beyond. 
these kind of examples are the kind of innovations that we want to really showcase in terms of Africa's, uh, in terms of the Africa Internet Governance Forum. And we also have a lot of positive examples that we can showcase when this Internet Governance Forum comes to Addis Ababa uh, in 2022. Notably, some of the initiatives that the Economic Commission for Africa has been involved in includes the African Girls Can Code initiative, which the first edition held jointly with ITU and UN Women was held in December 2020 very successfully, bringing young women and girls together in person in Addis Ababa to access a coding capacity building, as well as young women and girls connecting from across the continent. These are the type of initiatives that we hope to further showcase in the African context, as well as properly showcasing the uh, opportunities that are there for young people across the continent. We also want to make sure that there is appropriate focus on the needs in the continent, which includes in particular capacity building, but also resources that would be made available for African governments to be able to properly put in place the enabling environment to make full use of the internet and to build the opportunity to fully implement the African Union digital transformation strategy. So with these few uh, words of introduction, I would now hand back to the Secretariat uh, to lead us through our discussions. And we look forward very much also to hear from the minister from Ethiopia who has uh, kindly joined us uh, so that we can hear a bit more um, on the uh, planning for the event that will be held in Addis Ababa. And my colleagues will also be sharing a bit more details around the uh, Africa Internet Governments Forum, which will be happening in just, just, over, just under a week from now. Thank you all for being here and for participating in this very important discussion. And we look forward to all of your input with a view to having real effective African agency around the regulation of the internet, but most importantly about using it for sustainable development. Thank you. Yeah, so thank you very much. Um, at, at this moment, I will hand over to the moderator, uh, Mary Duma, uh, to take over from where this uh, is. Good afternoon, everyone, and um, I hope um, those online can hear us clearly. And um, thank you for making our time to be here. Uh, we could recognize our, our uh, friends and also, uh, yeah, yeah, uh, dignitaries. Uh, honorable Minister, sir, the parliament. We have honorable parliamentarian here uh, from Tanzania. Please, I need us to recognize that. And um, in, in as much as we recognize the honorable, uh, uh, honorable minister of um, state in um, communication, uh, I mean, in communication, right? Okay, all right, from Ethiopia. And um, our director from, uh, from um, ECE. So the, we are here to talk about Africa 2022. And Africa is hosting what these people have done today of this week that we are looking at, uh, are we ready? Uh, where can we? Where where and where 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 is our standing? What can we do from from now to when uh, it happens? And uh, and the anchor is um, is um, uh, um, the ECE. But I want to say that Anya is here, right? Anya is uh, I. And she, oh, our own person is here, our own man, Shangatai. Uh, so please, you can greet us. <laughs> Hello, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, and um, you know that um, we in 2020, we had a, a tragedy and we lost one of our own very person who would have been here to anchor this, but he's not here, but we're moving on with it, the spirit. His spirit is still working with us. And so I would like us to just take a minute to 
to have a mini silence in honor and remembrance of Makan Fai. Please join me. May the soul of the departed rest in peace. Amen. So uh, having said that, we remember him very well. So I will hand over to ECA. Let's not waste time. And um, oh, Anya, do you want to say something to us? Just uh, thank you, Mary, for moderating and uh, wisdom as well to org for organizing this session. It's a pleasure for me to be here. And thank you for inviting me. Okay, thank you. Um, we we'll remember that our very own is the chair of the MAG till the end of the year. And um, unfortunately, I'm not sure she's here. Okay, I'm not sure she's here, but for the meantime, can we have. Um, yeah. We have Shangatai, we have Ariet, Ar Ar and we have Anya. Yes. Are they going to say anything? Yes. Uh, okay. Greetings from the Secretary. Uh, I May I ask, are you preparing to come to Africa? That's it. That's the big question first. And we went to Addis Ababa, and yes, um, all right, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, Africa, you have heard; they are ready for us. Anya, do you want to say any other thing? As Jangatai said, we already went to Addis Ababa for the first assessment mission. Uh, we came back with high impressions of first of all the city, of the ECA premises, of the government's enthusiasm and commitment to host a very good IGF next year. And uh, we hope, of course, though, next year to have a big IGF in Ethiopia with many more colleagues in person than it, it is here, hopefully in safe conditions. And uh, one of the goals that we will try to work on next year will be, of course, um, in addition to preparing the IGF capacity development. I think um, the biggest asset of the continent are young people. You have an impressive youth network of youth IGFs, uh, also youth represented through the national and regional IGFs. We would like to see a really robust capacity development uh, component done in a bottom-up manner, in consultative manner with many young people from the African continent, also connecting them to youth from all over the world. And we'll see next year. Hopefully, we will all work together on that. Thank, thank you very much for the reassurance that um, uh, IGF is really coming to Africa, and uh, it will be in Ethiopia, in the anchored at the ECA and for the good marks ECA has gotten, we, we are happy about it. So over now to to um, Makta. Thank you, Makta. Thank you, Marie. How prepared prepared are we? Where are we? What's the status? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Marie. First of all. It's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Marie. Thank you, colleague, uh, for attending this important meeting. As said by Jean Paul, ECA is ready uh, to work closely with the government of uh, Ethiopia and the IGF Secretariat to host this uh, uh, meeting. But uh, I just remind you something very important. It's, it's, it's a requested to have this meeting in Africa because uh, since the beginning, there is a lot of IGF organized elsewhere Africa. The IGF, it is a stakeholder. and we want to show what's happening in Africa. Means the meeting next year, IGF next year in Africa is not uh, for African to come to attend, to participate. We have to be involved in the substance of this meeting. It's very important because uh, we have uh, Africa, we have uh, several skills 
and several innovation. And also at the regulatory framework, we have a several model we can show to the rest of the, of, of the world. We have several uh, experience running across the continent. I example, uh, highlight some. Last week, we organized an uh, innovator, ex, uh, innovation uh, industrial investment week. We were around one, more than 1,400 1, startups in Africa to develop several applications. Also, we have several fora talking about this, uh, the digital infrastructure in Africa and also this critical infrastructure, the issue of regulatory in Africa. We have a finance payment system, finance payment committee. We have uh, several e-learning platform. I think it is a time for Africa to be, to be present in the digital era to show what we did in Africa, why the, your, your participation is very important. And uh, I, I insist on, uh, on, the, on the substance. Well, I think it's better we are going to have a committee hmm, to get several actors to see how Africa can participate to organize several side events to be present in the several plenary on the exhibition also to show some use case in Africa. And uh, I, I, I would like to highlight this first. The second, I think I'm, I'm going to, before I give to uh, the floor to my uh, colleague, we're working in conference center to tell you where we are at the level of preparation. I would like also to, to discuss uh, some of uh, some issues related to the next African IGF happening next week. I think we are uh, all ready for that. And we, we invite everybody to attend this meeting will be online and the meeting will be hosted by uh, Nigeria. And is uh, I take this opportunity also to invite the Honorable Minister of State to attend also this IGF uh, online. Honorable Minister, you are invited to attend this African IGF uh, online next week. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and good morning, good evening, wherever you are all over the world, you're following virtually this meeting. And I would like to thank that you invite me to share what's our preparation as the next host uh, country. So what we have been doing yet is our preparation is a way which will focus on critical questions of addressing Africa's issue. So this can't be realized without collaborating with such and similar African black uh, platforms. So we believe our preparation should focus on collaborating with major stakeholders in region to crop and challenge of infrastructure. So I would say IGF 2022 will be a great opportunity to Africa, but this requires to engage relevant stakeholders in Africa, like these platforms. As you all are aware, the issue of infrastructure, especially connectivity and power will remain a challenge for our continent, Africa, together with the help of African nations and the UNDESA will, should be able to mobilize the international support and raise awareness on the mentioned issues of connectivity and power. And also we need to work together to design the agenda on oldest and new challenges which are facing at this time. So the Ethiopian government is in need to access, to work with the organizers of this session and other actors work on the need to raise awareness and support on it. So connectivity and the last mile access to connection, including the most remote areas, accommodating this living in rural and unconnected areas, which are not feasible for business perspective, support digital transformations. So also mobilize support on power, especially investment access, 
last mile connection, diversifying energy sources of grid solutions must be addressed in collectively ways. So therefore, I would like to use this opportunity to call upon all the stakeholders to work with the Ethiopian government to use IGF 2022 as an opportunity to address the pressing issue of the continent. I would like to assure you that we will create a platform that will enable your engagement throughout the preparation. And I am sure we will have a truly African IGF by the next year. And once again, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the organizers and welcoming you all to Ethiopia. Thank you so much. Thank you, the Honorable Minister, and um, thank you for reassuring us. And uh, I want to re-emphasize the collaborative or collaboration that you have already mentioned. So we are looking forward to that. Um, and so um, um, we have heard that the, the host country is also preparing. So we go back to ECA. ECA, please, can you can you tell us more of what you're doing? My, my, my colleague, Yemi, will talk about the level right. of preparation of ECA. Right. Okay. Okay, hello everyone. It's a pleasure to be here and to have firsthand experience on uh, how the AGF is, is uh, done. And um, I'm happy to say, uh, along with uh, my colleagues Anya and Chengetai, that we're more than ready to host this conference. We have various uh, plenary rooms. Um, we have two uh, huge halls that could, uh, could be connected electronically and that could accommodate up to 1300 participants. Of course, it's all dependent on COVID and hoping that it will go away. Um, we have multifunction rooms that could be used for catering facilities. Um, the SEA premises is quite vast uh, with the cooperation of the Ethiopian government. Of course, we could uh, use the space to build maybe modular rooms. Uh, this needs to be discussed, of course. And so the space is really the limit. Um, we also have various uh, reputable hotels in the vicinity. Uh, when we hosted uh, the financing for development, we used this hotels in the vicinity, which are in walking distance to host uh, those side events. Uh, we have not noted that there were 300 events uh, hosted here, so we could use those hotels in the vicinity uh, to host uh, that. So it's what is needed is to uh, work collaboratively with the, uh, our uh, colleagues in the government on how to organize the transportation and how to do the logistics. Uh, also, we have adequate space for registration or even off-site, we can organize that. So this is also under discussion. Uh, we have also ordered a beautiful weather in December, so we are able to uh, use our beautiful... <laughs> uh, beautiful terraces uh, outside areas so that you can enjoy fresh air of Addis. And we are more than excited to organize this conference in Addis. With this, I over to you. Okay. Thank you, um, Zach. Okay, so um, the, I, I, I know Shangate and, the, and the Anya would have, you know, downloaded to you what and what that are required to host. And uh, this is the 16th IGF. The one we are going is the 17th. And most of most most people here have attended like um like um um like um uh, Ponslet. I know I know he has attended I think almost all of them. So I'm not sure there's one he has not attended. So we know the standard we know what is expected we know the what goes in in preparing for it is not is not uh, granite. <laughs> uh, that's what our people say. It's not granite. It, it's not beans. A, a lot of work need to be done. A lot of um, support. We know we have infrastructure issues, so we need we need ECA to connect with the operators in Nigeria in uh, Africa, 
MTN in particular should come strongly to support us. We need uh, the power sector, we need power because if we don't have power, it will be a disaster. Um, and uh, so there are other things, apart from the social side, there is the technical, there is the logistics, there is the administration, there is, you know, even volunteers, we need to raise a lot of volunteers, not less than 100 or 200 volunteers that will do a lot of logistics work, uh, uh, ushering work and the rest of them. So it's a huge, a huge call to action. So I don't know whether we have started making such moves. Yes, you want to say something? Yes. Makan, do you want to, um, Makan, Mata, do you want to say something? Oh my God. No, I, at, at, at ECA will be ready on the, basically we, are, we, we have the infrastructure and also at the country level, you will get Safaricom next year, second operator. And I think Safaricom will bring Lot of innovation and lot of uh, good infrastructure in the in the in the in the country. Okay. The minister can confirm because somebody come <laughs> okay. we'll go closely with you. <laughs> uh, okay, that that's fine. That's that's uh, gladdening to hear. But we'll continue to work on it and make sure that we get it well done. Um, uh, before we go into uh, forming a tax force or asking about tax force, I know by the time we do Africa IGF next week we should be able to also look, focus on it and see what we can do at Africa level. And uh, I hope the heads of state in Africa, they know about this, that IGF is coming to Africa and that their countries are also needed to support this uh, move to bring IGF to Africa. So it's not just because it's a regional, I think it's a regional thing. It's not just Ethiopia, it's a regional thing. So we'll all get to, get our hands dirty to make sure that it happens and happens well. Okay, uh, thank you. Uh, we have, we have a, a, before we go to the task force on discussions, we have um, a friend and uh, a support from uh, IGFSA, that is IGF um, Support Association. Marcos, are you on online? I, I'm online, yes, can okay. you hear me? Okay, so please go ahead. Yes, thank you, Marion. Uh, good, good afternoon, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It's a great pleasure for me to join you at the Africa IGF, and it's a great opportunity to reconnect with many friends, even if it's only online. And on behalf of my colleagues on the executive committee, and Wisdom is one of them, uh, it's my pleasure to convey the greetings of IGFSA to the African IGF. Let me say a few words about the IGFSA. It was set up in 2014 to support the IGF and also the NRIs. Over time, we shifted our focus away from the global IGF to the NRIs. We still support the UN IGF Trust Fund and IGFSA is recognized by the UN as a contributor. However, we found that our modest contributions can have more impact with the NRIs. And like others, we are happy to see the growing recognition the NRIs get. They are a key component of the wider IGF ecosystem and the central part of the discussions leading to the IGF Plus, the Secretary General's Common Agenda and the proposed Global Compact. All these global processes are important, but I like to say that good internet governance begins at home and the NRIs play an important role in shaping decisions that can have a real impact. They can talk to their governments and legislators and advocate for internet-friendly policies, or maybe more importantly, stop well-meant policies that could have unintended consequences with a negative impact on the internet. And we do have examples of national IGFs that played such a decisive role. We are all here because we believe in the importance of multi-stakeholder dialogue. Multi-stakeholder dialogue is not an end in itself. The ultimate objective, as stated in the IGF mandate, is to have a better internet, an internet that is global, open, interoperable, stable, and secure. And all NRIs play a very crucial part, a crucial role to this end that is to have a better and effective participative governance of a global resource. 
and we all look forward when the Internet Governance Forum meets next year in Africa. And let me end with an invitation. Tomorrow, the IGFSA has its uh, General Assembly, and many, mem many of you are members of the IGFSA, but all of you are invited to join and maybe become members. It's tomorrow at the same time, lunchtime, 12.45, also here in Katowice and online. And with that, I thank you and wish you an excellent meeting. Thank you. Thank you very much. Most of us in the, in, uh, the NRIs in Africa, we have benefited from the support of uh, um, IGFSA. And so we are grateful. Um, we want to open the floor for about uh, 10 minutes so that we can finish before we form the, the task force. Anybody has a comment? Oh, please, may I know whether there are people that are not following our um, language issue? Any language issue? Somebody promised to. All right. OK. Yeah, thank you very much. I'm Pon Slate speaking from the Gambian IGF. I just want to make a contribution as um, I think we are just going back to the continent for the global IGF since Kenya. And um, I think it's very important if you look at, I think that was 2011, it's now about nine years. If you look at in that nine years, what has happened in the continent is that we have engaged our young people better in within through the youth IGF. And a lot of them are present here today. So I think we, they should all stand up, all the young people here, please stand up from the African Youth IGF, stand up. I think we have to attribute that if we are talking of agenda 2063 of the African Union, our youth are the driving force. And I will want to encourage all of them to be very active and collaborate with the Ethiopian government and with um, UNECA so that they take a lead role in this IGF and they will be our voice for the continent. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, my name is Naza Nicholas from uh, Tanzania. And uh, uh, what I would uh, really want to see uh, on the Africa, uh, global IGF uh, in Africa, is to be able to showcase the uh, innovation of young people in Africa. That is very key because as you know, our continent is very young and I would like for the UNECA and uh, the Ethiopia government to make their channels open for the young people so they can be able to participate fully from pre-events all the way to the, to the, to the event, uh, event itself. So that is very fundamental for us. And uh, we have a contingent of young people in Tanzania everywhere who can also uh, be able to showcase what, what the continent is doing. Number two, uh, just a, a little. <laughs> um, Number two is uh, is is for for the for to tap into the brains of people like Mary and Ponslate and others who have been in IGF for so many years. So they are an asset to the uh, to the organizers. That is uh, what I wanted to say. I have somebody that has graduated from being young person and become a, vo a voice and an ambassador to us, maybe he wants to make an intervention. Benga. Thank you for admitting that I've now graduated. <laughs> I mean, um, I definitely uh, endorse the, the, comment, the comments about involving young people, uh, not as a tokenistic thing, uh, but in reality, the continent is getting younger. And uh, if, if we do say we're planning the future and we're doing it on behalf of young people without them, then we're deceiving ourselves. Uh, also to say that we must demonstrate the multi-stakeholder nature of the IGF. Um, you know, civil society should not be an afterthought. Um, so are all, you know, stakeholder groups. And, and I trust that the process that will lead to that happening is making sure that in the planning of the activities that the government of Ethiopia, uh, the ECA, I mean, the ECA is no stranger to <laughs> those multi-stakeholder groups anyway, uh, that 
we definitely build from the ground up with all these groups so that it will not, because it will be a shame uh, if we end up last minute now being tokenistic and looking for young people, looking for women, looking for civil society and, and all of that. We have all that we need to make the continent proud and use this moment to bring all of the groups together to walk towards Agenda 2063. It's not just theory, it's practical. Thank you very much uh, for your intervention. That's, that's encouraging. And we still have uh, um, the Honorable, the Honorable um, uh, MP will speak, but do we have people online? Who is on? I don't see any. All right. The MP, please. Um, thank you very much, Madam Mary. My name is Nema Lugangira, and I'm a member of parliament from Tanzania. Um, the one thing that I would like to say would be very important and crucial for this IGF coming into Africa is making sure that we also create that platform to ensure parliamentarians from African countries fully engage, fully participate, and be part of the process of this internet governance in Africa. And it's particularly important because most of the policy, legislative and regulatory framework depends upon us as parliamentarians from Africa. Mm -hmm. So I think um, it's very important to ensure that we create that environment and facilitation for parliamentarians from African countries to participate fully. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, can you take the, okay. Um, but before you continue, um, uh, our very own uh, person, uh, Ariad is here. So we want to say thank you for coming, for sparing this time. And uh, we'll be calling on you. You are not tired, even if you are finished with Global IGF. Africa is hosting IGF in 2022. So we need your expertise. We need your hands. We need everything to support us, please. Uh, thanks. <laughs> Sorry. Thank you, Mary. And uh, I'm so sorry I'm late for this session. I had another arrangement and I, I had to double it up, but thank you for organizing it. And I think, and it's just amazing to see such a strong African presence here at the IGF. And, um, and I think we need to continue that. And just the few things I heard as I walked into the room, I really want to endorse it. Benga saying that the presence of civil society is important. I think if we take all kind of struggle, uh, uh, conflict or tension out of the IGF, the IGF will lose its power. We have issues, we deal with challenges, we have access challenges, we have governments that shut down the internet, we have human rights violations, we have social and economic deprivation. We need to be able to bring those topics um, to the IGF. And if the IGF um, becomes too neutral, <laughs> too friendly, I think it will lose its impact. It is about working with uh, governments and other stakeholder groups about building understanding and cooperation, but it's also about openness and honesty and actually confronting our challenges. I also just want to say that uh, often the, 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 the key to effective participation is also nuts and bolts, it's detail. So for example, our, our MP from Tanzania, who's been a fantastic participant in this process, we should have had other MPs as well. And I think, unfortunately, the invitations for MPs go through the International Parliamentary Union. And not all African MPs are, ne are necessarily part of that network. So we need to do the next steps ourselves. We can't always just wait for the Secretariat or the UN to do that. We have to then, as Africans, take that step, find out what opportunities they are at the, at the IGF, invite our own MPs, connect them into the system. Um, so yes, back to you, Mary. I think, I do think Ethiopia, it will be challenging. Ethiopia is going through challenges. There's a lot of inaccurate information in the media about what's happening in Ethiopia. Um, so we need to work with that as well and try and spread information. But yes, I think it is an important opportunity for us. Thank you, Arid. And uh, please, we need, I, I think we have journalists here. We, ha we have those that can communicate effectively. Please, we want to change the narratives uh, for, for uh, Africa. Okay, uh, we have um, online, Ghana Hub. Ghana Hub, are you ready? Can you speak, please? One minute. Hello. Yeah, my name is Edward Nana Gawanyo from Ghana Communication University, Ghana Telecom. How I want to ask this question. How fast will our connectivity catch up with 
catch up if the rural areas and communities are connected. And my second question is, how possible will be how possible will it be able to reduce the online harassment such as hacking to people's account? And my last question will be, how will we know the information we get on the internet are accurate? Thank you. Thank you very much for your questions. We'll come back to your question, but let's see. One minute each. I start. Oh. <laughs> So briefly, I think uh, just adding up to the question of inclusion uh, and echoing uh, the young people uh, concerns as well, I think it will be important, critically important for um, IGF in Addis to be intentional in inclusion of women and girls, because we have seen statistics, we are not doing well, and uh, gender digital divide is real, uh, women are not included, and they make half of the people in the continent. So we really need to be intentional and in reaching out and access FemNet, we are standing ready to support Ethiopian government and the UNSA to mobilize African women and girls to be part and parcel of the process. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Go back, tell your girls, tell your women, they should connect to the online. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. My name is Rafiu Afolabi from Nigeria, Federal <laughs> Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy. Uh, it, it's in those days that we say, youths are leaders of tomorrow. Today, they are our leaders. Most of them even do know more than what we, their parents do know. So um, I will want this uh, gathering to encourage all governments, all countries to ensure that we have uh, association of internet governance forums in all colleges and universities. If that is done and they are encouraged, at, uh, ensure there are competitions for them to encourage them so that at the end of the day, they know what we do here and then the, 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 the sky will be the beginning. Thank you. Then me, Madam Chair. Um, good afternoon. My name is Tolofelo Mokoni. I work for the Dazere Domain Name Authority. Um, I'd just like to speak up for a stakeholder group that I think is often um, underrepresented in discussions on internet governance, and uh, which is the Disabled, which is persons living with disabilities. Um, and I would like to strongly urge that we also consider their participation and their involvement in the planning because they are equally affected by um, internet and internet regulation. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Madam Chair and colleagues all connected here. Um, my name is Keith Andere, for those who have not connected before, and I am the youth representative at the Africa IGF MUG. And I also have um, the single pleasure to also uh, support and coordinate the Africa Youth IGF at Africa level. As uh, all colleagues here have said, I think um, they have actually echoed on um, the role of young people into uh, the planning of this IGF. And I think we've seen a lot of um, young people taking the lead, uh, not only here in uh, Poland, but we also so that uh, in 2019 in Germany. And I think on behalf of young people who are connected here and many of us who we've also left uh, back in the continent, we have the capacity uh, to actually be very, very involved in the planning of um, the IGF 2022. I would also just like to urge the ECA uh, also to open doors from uh, the resident coordinators at national level to see how we can support uh, young people at national level uh, and also support the NRI, the youth IGF at national level because it's also very important. Lastly, Madam Chair, I think um, last year in Niger, you will recall that uh, we started a network for the Africa parliamentarians on IGF. Uh, I think this is also a good opportunity for us to advance that, uh, looking at how we can plug in members of parliament ahead of the IGF uh, next year. There's also the CACAS for the Young, Pal Young Africa Parliamentarians Association. I think it will also be very, very uh, helpful to reach out to them and see how we can, you know, uh, tag along the young parliamentarians as well, because, you know, they still play a second uh, hat on to it. So thank you so much. Uh, somebody okay. is already standing. Okay. After him, yes. Please, one minute. We have less than 20. Hello? Okay. Uh, bonjour. C'est Monsieur Kabine Doumbia du Mali. Vous comprenez aisément que la langue, c'est un problème aujourd'hui. Tout le monde parle en anglais. Il y a plus de huit pays à, à francophones ici. On ne comprend pas ce que vous êtes en train de dire. Donc, je vous en prie. Et quand on parle de l'Afrique, c'est l'Afrique francophone, anglophone et lisophone aussi. 
Donc, il faut que ça soit simultané. La tradition doit être simultanée. Merci. This meeting started. Somebody volunteered to interpret. Okay. So, yeah, that that's, is, uh, that's uh, it. it was me who uh, okay. said that I could have helped on that. He was just uh, saying that uh, we need to be more inclusive regarding language. So for me, I will maybe say that we need to uh, make sure that uh, the EGF uh, 2020 in Africa should be more participatory. So as uh, speaking in my full capacity of civil society, uh, we need uh, to involve um, civil society uh, in the preparation of, uh, of uh, this uh, upcoming uh, um, EGF forum. Uh, but also maybe to see with my friend, uh, the one from uh, Senegal to include uh, maybe the president of Senegal who will be the next uh, president of uh, African Un Union. I don't know if you have already have some contact with him so that uh, through him other state African leader could participate because we need all public, private and uh, civil society to be involved in Africa. I think it's our time. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's a good good information for us. And uh, Eric, please. Um, Mary, I want to just make a, a concrete proposal. Um, I would suggest that for this African gathering to, to be more impactful, that next year it's organized for day zero and that we get interpretation. Um, if all plans go ahead, it will be in Addis. We can even organize our own interpretation and raise funding for it, or we can ask the UN if they would provide it. But already the Latin American group for the last few years, they have a Latin American and Caribbean session at the IGF on day zero, the first day. And this has really worked to strengthen their participation in the IGF as a whole. So I think we should really aim to do that next year. Let's have our Af African gathering. Let's give it two hours, three hours even, and do it much more substantively in 2022. Okay, thank you. Is zero. it Anya that wants to say something? Thank you, Mary. Uh, uh, okay. Okay, so uh, the idea was to summarize what whatever was said in English to the French audience so that we avoid that bias because from my colleague, what he just said is very important. Donc, chers amis, euh, très rapidement, l'idée de nous réunir aujourd'hui, c'est de voir quel est notre niveau de préparation pour la GF en Éthiopie. Et euh, beaucoup de personnes ont parlé, mais ça a été plus des questions d'inclusion. Donc, ils ont dit que voilà, au niveau des députés, essayez de discuter avec nos députés au plan national pour voir comment on peut les inclure dans le processus d'AGF, parce qu'ils sont ceux qui votent les lois et les décisions. Il y a aussi euh, eu euh, des participants qui ont demandé à ce que voilà, les jeunes soient de plus en plus inclus dans le processus d'organisation de l'événement en Éthiopie. Et il y a eu aussi euh, notre sœur d'Afrique du Sud qui a souligné la question des personnes vivant avec euh, des, des, comment, des handicaps, qu'on puisse quand même les inclure dans le processus, parce qu'ils font aussi partie euh, de notre communauté. Donc, avant euh, les intervenants, il y a eu des questions euh, qui ont été posées au niveau de UNICA et au niveau du gouvernement éthiopien pour savoir leur niveau de préparation. Donc, je pense qu'ils ont rassuré sur euh, tout ce qui est infrastructure, tout ce qui est organisation jusqu'en ce moment. Et je pense que le secrétariat aussi euh, des Nations Unies a aussi souligné que voilà, ils ont fait le voyage sur Addis et que voilà, euh, tout est fin prêt. Maintenant, euh, l'objectif euh, de nous réunir... Euh, et parler dans plusieurs langues. Henriette vient de le souligner que l'année prochaine en Éthiopie, le premier jour de l'AJF sera organisé dans ce sens pour que voilà, il y ait plusieurs interprétations, même si les Nations Unies ne vont pas fournir d'interprétation. Il faut qu'à notre niveau, on puisse quand même lever des fonds pour que voilà, l'AJF soit plus inclusif. Maintenant, venant à moi ma question ou ma proposition, parce qu'avant de résumer, j'avais ma question. <rire> Donc, moi, ce que je proposerais à l'Assemblée, c'est que nous ne quittons pas cette salle aujourd'hui sans avoir euh, notre task force. C'est-à-dire qu'il y a beaucoup de personnes dans ce processus qui se proposent volontaires, mais quand nous quittons ce genre de réunion, c'est deux, trois personnes euh, qui se réunissent après pour faire le travail. Donc, il sera très important aujourd'hui de savoir au niveau de UNICA ou du gouvernement éthiopien, qu'est-ce qu'on peut faire et que voilà, avant de quitter cette réunion, ou bien avant de quitter euh, Katowice, qu'on soit en mesure quand même de, de mettre en place uh, the tax force la avant de quitter ici. So in English, quickly, my suggestion was we don't leave this meeting without a tax force because it's very important. When it comes to IGF, people say, yes, we are ready for it. We'll do, we'll be volunteers. But even national level, 
you see one or two people who end up doing the job. So we don't live here without a tax force. That's my suggestion. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, so uh, back to ECA. So how do you want to how do you want us to proceed, please? Okay. Now I think we have uh, two outcomes for this meeting. The first outcome it is a. Uh, the idea of Ariet to have this Africa Day during the IGF. We have the same format and as the, as the UN General Assembly, we have Africa Day. And I think we put that outcome and next year we can organize Africa Day. Yeah? And ECA is, re is ready to provide the translation. For, for, uh, thank for you that. very much. Yeah. We, but we want to have a task force. For the task force now, yes. I think we can, uh, we, we, we have several proposals, parliamentarian, the youth, the civil society, eh? private sector. And I think we can have uh, one nominate for each category and we can have this uh, task force. I think we can- Okay, if any have other suggestion? This is what he has suggested. Yeah. Aria, do you think that, that will work for us? Um, thanks very much. I think Maktar, your suggestion is very good and thank you. I know we can rely on ECA um, support for this and we can make it an Africa morning. It doesn't have to be the whole day because there are also other events. And um, so I would, I mean, would I hope that someone from ECA would be willing to be on the task force. Yes. Emmanuel, would you be willing to be on the task force? Um, I think if there are people here that are, it's good to have different stakeholder groups, but I think it's even more important to have people that will deliver. I'm looking at Keith here because I know him as a deliverer. So I'm hoping he will also join. Um, but I think it's a very good suggestion, Mary. Okay, Th thank you. Uh, we have said uh, the, the anchor is, um, is wisdom. This is the brain, he's the brainchild of this. So please let's uh, acknowledge uh, wisdom. Wisdom, thank you very much. So what, what we are going to do is that he, we already have, have a platform that we are all discussing. So is, is a, a starting point for us. And we don't want to wait till September to start planning. We want to start planning from yesterday. Okay, now we, we, we start from yesterday and we'll have the first meeting during the African IGF of the committee. Okay, then. I think now we have uh, ECA is in the uh, task force. We have Ethiopia, Ethiopia. of course, yes. and the task force. We are going to have the secretary of IGF. And now we are going to identify uh, the representative of the civil society, parliamentary, young people. Eh? Yeah, we don't need to have a big, uh, uh, yes, I think if you have a committee of uh, seven, six members is, is largely enough. Hmm? Okay. We'll have all stakeholders represented. We'll have the youth, the women, the parliamentarian. We have a parliamentarian here, she can volunteer. And uh, we already know that she will do that. And we have uh, those that are working hard. But I think ECA, you need a consultant. I just want to mention this to you. You need a consultant so that you don't have to carry everything. Those that understand what, how it goes, please. And uh, I, I think it will, if the consultant work with the Ethiopian government and with the tax force, it works well. Uh, I, I, and that's what happens in IGF. IGF, there are very few in IGF secretariat, but they work with consultants. I think I'm saying the truth. Uh. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Merci, so. moi, c'est Thierry Abdulba. Je viens de la Guinée-Conakry. Et je suis très honoré d'être là parmi vous. Et je pense que par rapport à, à ce qui est en perspective en Éthiopie. OK. Par rapport à ce qui est en perspective en Éthiopie, j'aimerais beaucoup plus que les thématiques qui seront abordées en Éthiopie soient eh, principalement axées sur uh, trois dimensions en tenant compte des de défis africains. Je pense qu'aujourd'hui, dans le continent africain, il y a certains villages qui n'ont pas toujours accès à l'Internet. Donc, le problème sur l'accès à l'Internet doit être, je propose à ce que cela soit dedans. Deuxièmement, je propose à ce qu'il y ait la qualité de l'Internet fournie. Dans d'autres lieux, on parle de 2G, et alors qu'en Europe, on parle aujourd'hui de 5G. Donc, la nécessité aussi de, de parler sur la qualité de l'Internet est importante. Troisième phase, de dimension euh, qui sera abordée autour des discussions, je propose à ce qu'il y ait aussi sur le coût lié à l'Internet. C'est très cher en Afrique par rapport à d'autres pays et de l'autre côté. Thank Merci. you. Emmanuel, can you yes, interpret in one minute? So he's saying that he wants three issues to be discussed during the African IGF. Okay. So he talked about access okay. in rural communities. He talked about cost and quality of service. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, we have a rapporteur, uh, uh, Lily, and the, the rest. I don't know who is supporting you, Lily. And Ines, please, we need to, to share the outcomes of the, of the meeting so that we can tell them um, we can also support ECA. Is that OK? And the government of Ethiopia uh, to see what we can. OK, so you round us up. We're, OK, we're we do, that's fine. We need the name. I think we. We can have the name now for the committee. Okay. And want to, do, want to, a suggestion, want to do a global form something, let it be fair. Yeah. And people apply. Yeah. Yeah. That's the yeah. Game. yeah. You give us your motivation for applying and uh, you are available to, to serve at the task force. That's important to us. Thank you. Um, I want to thank everybody. We will have two minutes. Um, um, Makta, if you want to say the closing thing, or Anya, I want to say something before we close. Just a big thank you. A lot of action points from this uh, meeting. I just want to uh, advise as well, uh, Mary and everyone else, Her Excellency as well, uh, colleagues from the African Union, do connect with the host country with Poland. They also had a program committee which worked very well, maybe on the rules, how they were appointed and so on. Same with Germany. I think both of the host countries set really some new standards for the IGF, so it's worth of hearing advice from them. And thank you very much for this meeting. Magda, just to say thank you to everybody and also to reiterate the support of ECA for this for the next coming IGF in Africa. And I think we were the contribution in the environment or for all African starting by the government, parliamentary, youth, private sector, women, all can attend, participate actively to make a successful this African IGF. Okay. And don't forget also to attend the next African IGF. Next Please week. go register next week. AFIGF.Africa. Yeah. They fill the form, register, please, and uh, participate. And we have this one, uh, 14 of 16. Uh, 14 to 16. Yes, December. 14 to 16, yes. And the next week, we are we are going to have also the regional Africa meeting on which is outcome for Africa in Djibouti. Okay. Uh, we have uh, two events before the end of the year, African IGF, the, the which is uh, African Revi, as well as the, the, the setup of the national committee, the international committee for the IGF 2022. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Honorable Minister, please connect with your colleague ministers in Africa. Just press the... Okay. okay, I would like to thank all of you for giving us a very constructive uh, comment. So we really appreciate it. It shows us how cooperation works and you showed us your solidarity here. So we are thankful for this. I would like to say a few words on what, uh, what has been already raised. For example, the cooperation platforms are the most important thing for African countries because we are going to use this IGF 2022 an opportunity for African problems, just challenging, uh, solving those all problems. So we really appreciate that. So the tax force is very important, but I would like to add while we are establishing the tax force, we have to identify what are the major challenges when it comes to connectivity and power all over in Africa. So how we are going to come. So this will be a good opportunity uh, to create the topic here. That will be a, a good opportunity. So the other thing is the engagement of the civi uh, civic society, private sectors, para public sectors are very important because we all are together. We all are going together. So it's must, we have to participate. That's the other most important phrase that is uh, inclusive women and girls. As we know, uh, <clears throat> there is a gap, there is a divide, digital divide. So we have to minimize this divide. Yeah. So we have to 
make them on board. Thank the you. Women's and girls. Thank, Thank you, you so very much. much.